Welcome to Rauta. This video is done in commercial collaboration with our sponsor Steelfest. Welcome to Rauta. This time it's a topic that's not exactly the most interesting one, but quite boring, yet at the same time very important because some people have a lot of hard time understanding what review scores mean, why they're used and beyond. Now lately I've been encountering some of the comments, but of course this kind of a conversation goes throughout the years and years. Why do you hate this band? Why do you like this band? Why do you give such scores? Why no scores are used? and beyond and what they mean. Like lately I'm gonna use this as an example and if in case you're wondering what the hell is this background thing, it's my review and also interview list which doesn't include all the reviews I've made but maybe one third of it but it um, works as a tool for people to check out given interviews and reviews of course and that should give you a lot like a good idea what's going on with the with their reviews and uh, how the scores are done and blah 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 you know this list goes on and on and on for I don't know over 2000 reviews so far and all the interviews here far this link is public so you can just check it out from the uh, link tree here but why this is used as a backdrop now that brings us to the very topic of reviews and review scores. Like lately someone was saying like why do you hate this and that band? What, why that you are like not appreciating all those bands and all that stuff? And I was like but those bands were actually quite good. I was giving positive scores like 7 and 7.5 and all that stuff. Not bad ones like 3 or 4 or whatever. And uh, it's interesting how people pick up different words in a way that you know they consider that if I'm not praising some album like fully to the max, it's shit. <laughs> and I don't really think it's like that. Like if we are in a kind of a binary system of going through reviews, then we could say there are only two kinds of scores. One, it's not worth buying. I mean, you're not literally buying the album because it's not good enough for your wallet. And two, the ones that are actually good for buying. Now, this kind of a binary take is very interesting because it's actually beyond the bullshit. It's kind of like talk to talk, but can you walk the walk? Some people might say, yeah, I really like the album, but are you really, really ready to buy it? And when we translate this kind of a scoring system into something like one out of five, uh, one to five kind of star system, or from one to 10 or one to 100%, well, it's quite different. I mean, I could make the argument that for me, anything beyond 8 is not worth buying. Which would mean that only those 8 out of 10 and better are the 2's of this binary system. The ones that I'm ready to buy. And the rest, they might be worth listening to, but are they really worth buying? No, they are not. Because I don't want to have some albums which are like 6 out of 10, like listenable but forgettable or whatever, in my shelf, in my collection. They just take space and I would never go want, want willingly go back to them. That's why I do review work to figure out what I like and where to give you pointers. Now one could even make the argument that there is this kind of a three uh, tier system. One could say the ones that are worth buying, basically like the binary, the ones that are worth listening but not worth buying and there it's when streaming services and mp3s and whatever enter the game like hey we're good enough for listening but maybe not worth buying and then the ones that are not worth either but even that kind of a rating system is pretty harsh I could do it if I wanted to but I don't think that kind of a three tier, tier system is not that well understood which would leave probably more question marks and cause more harm than any good right so because I've been writing in reviews for past more than 20 years and on that side, Imperiumi, which is also listed here, the, there is a system from 1 to 10, meaning that roughly 6 
is the mediocre one. Anything beyond that is kind of a towards, well, not good. I, I wouldn't say five is bad, but I mean, it's definitely going to the direction like less than mediocrity, less than lukewarm. Like, I don't have intention to go praising all about it, but I wouldn't call it shit. And the ones that go towards one, especially scores from one to three, are, are shit, are trash, are garbage, not worth listening to, something that actually make me hate the music. And anything beyond six is, of course, on the good side of things. Like seven is definitely decent. Eight is clearly a good one. Nine is a great and ten is a masterpiece. This is something that I want to explain because a lot of people have hard time sometimes either understanding the scores or seeing the scores. Like, I don't have graphics for that. There's a couple of reasons. First of all, I do so many videos that if I kept honing the details with all the videos, adding graphics and all that stuff, I would barely have no life beyond doing a Rauta. Basically, it would probably just make me think, this is not worth it. The, the amounts of views by how people watch reviews are not that great. It makes any sense to do a lot of time on individual reviews. I know it sucks, to, you, you hear it from me, but it is what it is. I like, take the numbers and figure it out. The other reason is I want you to understand what I'm saying instead of just staring blindly at numbers. Now, through my 20 plus years as a review guy, I've learned a couple of things. First of all, people could be divided into two kinds of uh, people when it comes to checking out reviews. They're the ones who stare at the number, the score, and nothing beyond it. They see a 7 and like, hey, it's Cherry giving the 7. Come on, that's a classic. I, like, what the hell? Or whatever. They see a 9 and they're like, wow, this is going to be really good. Or they see a, th a th 3, a 4, a 5. And they're like, man, this guy really hates the music. Why, she, why, she, <laughs> why he hates the music so much? Now, the thing here is... Words go beyond that. There's a reason why reviews are always written, written out, like, you know, just laid out there for you to pick out, like, what's the style, uh, what's the production like, how are the maybe the vocals, what's the goods and bads of any given album and all that stuff. I get it. Some people don't have the time. They just want to go down the list like this and see anything beyond seven is worth checking out. That's how I feel about it anyway. But, you know, some people don't, care unless it's a really good one so they say seven as some kind of uh, offense like you gave it only seven why do you think it's shit i don't think seven is a shit seven is worth listening to is it worth buying for me nope and that's uh, something that people need to understand the other kind of people are not are the ones that don't really give a damn about the scores they are the ones that actually ignore it either actively or passively and they hear what i say or they read what i well, right, in case they are finished. And that's part of the problem as well. Now, those number viewers are the ones that just don't really get the pointers. They are all about bitching about the numbers when the numbers, the scores, are not as good as they hope to be. So you give a band, say, 7.5, which is a good one in my opinion. It's a good start from 7.5. And they're like, yeah, okay, you gave this score. You didn't really like it that much. And I'm like, it's not that simple. Like, you could have a good album, but if it has flaws, like, let's say the songwriting is really good. Let's say the production is also quite good. But the vocalist is what? What the hell is this guy doing? That might drop half a score, maybe a full one, and from 8 to 7, maybe a 7.5, whatever. The point is, it's all there with the words being said or written. It's not that complicated, really. But sometimes people just go with the scores and really think that it's, it's the self-explaining thing. And like I said, the other thing goes this. Like the reason to complain, like, why do you hate the band called Serpent Soul? I'm like, hate it? I gave the one album 7, and the other one was a little bit better, 7.5. So, basically decent and a good one. And uh, that would have been, in my opinion, quite uh, like uh, obvious if the person in question would have stared at the scores. Now I have to explain it in another message, which isn't frustrating because it would take time, but it's frustrating because the information was there to begin with. So some people like seem to have this black and white thing. If it's not really good, it's not, it's not, it's bad. If the reviewer doesn't like it, like love it, it's 
that. And in my opinion, it doesn't really work like that, unless you really want to go for that binary system, ones and twos. Now, I kind of get it also because, you know, people want to get the good ones. And some people even say it doesn't matter if you get a seven or three because it's all the same. If the review person didn't like it, then it's not likable. Or other people, it's not about reviewers really. It's just about how people see it. But then again, really, if you think about it, we are all like that. We love certain bands, we like certain bands, and the rest, they don't really matter. Once again, whatever happens on albums, however, isn't literally translated to something what you see on stage. So, for example, I could listen to a band which I will give a review like 6 out of 10. I would still possibly go to check out them live, because sometimes live is totally different. Some bands which are kind of a lukewarm, pure mediocrity, on the albums might actually be really good live and sometimes it's white versa a good example happened at inferno uh, nile is one of my all-time uh, death metal favorites i think all their albums are good eight or better and uh, i've seen them live a couple of times before and they have been really good but at inferno they had kind of a mushy bad production put it this way the sound was kind of getting mushy with the faster part so i walked out of the set like maybe before half the set was done and that's not to say i really really like the albums and i like the music but when you don't kind of get to enjoy it on stage things go different so once again what isn't exactly good and albums might be good on stage and vice versa also what is important to understand that um if, even if you like an album let's say you say feel like this is good but you are not ready to give it 5 out of 5. And the reason is this. Not all the albums are like the best of the pile. So sometimes people might be offended. They get like 8. And like, why didn't you like it beyond that? It's great. Yeah, it's great, but it's not masterpiece, you know? All I'm saying is there's a reason why certain albums are indeed 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, and things like that. And the other good albums, well, they might be really good. And they might be 8 for me. Like... Let's say this last Nord Evil album, I gave it 8 out of 10. I was almost giving it an 8.5, but then it was like, maybe something is a little missing. And that something missing doesn't mean it's a really good album. It's really a good album. Let's make it clear. But is it honestly, like, 5 out of 5 album? Is it really honestly like closer to 10 rather than 8? Not really in my opinion and don't get me wrong a lot of classics are something that i put along the lines like 8 or 8.5 so if you get 7.5 i mean you're already challenging those classics you're really like on the same level with that for example uh, a lot of people love emperor's second album anthems to the welcome at dusk and for me it's seven i mean it's very really, really decent album but there are also songs that i don't really like whereas there are also songs which i would take consider be 8 or closer to 9, but the overall album is still a 7, you get me? So it's not like it's a bad album by no means, it's definitely a decent one, but there's also a reason why I sold it from my collection years and years ago, it's not that great. Now people would be like, no, so what do you exactly like? Well if I take, for example, Dark Thrones Under a Funeral Moon or Transylvanian Hunger, they would be the 10s. Uh, the Mysteries Tom Satanas by Mayhem or In the Night Side Eclipse by Ember, they would be 9.5. And now the people are, okay, this is kind of a nitpicking, how do you draw a line between 9.5 and 10? Sometimes it's very, very hard to explain because some things just click perfectly and some are only near perfect. Now, if you get the near perfect score, however, congratulate yourself, give yourself a pat, because those are still like in the one person section of albums like Ever Made. So in the end, it doesn't really matter whether we're talking about 10s or 9.5s. Essentially, they are five-star albums, and that's, in my opinion, what counts. They're the ones that if my house burned down and I would be, you know, buying albums back, they would be the ones that I would start with, even if I've heard them a million times before, because they are the kind of, uh, you know, the most important jewels and gems, diamonds in my collection. So definitely, I love when bands are able to do really, really great music. And if you get a niner, you're like getting love from me. 
but this is not about me this is review scores in general and of course each and every reviewer justifies the scores a little bit different ways so by no means don't take my word for something that's written in stone and something that is like a law or I don't know regulation or <laughs> thing and advice it's merely my point if you don't like my reviews it's totally fine I wouldn't probably like them either if I was you and the scores don't give so much attention to the scores they are merely to give you pointers if I say this album is definitely worth listening to does it mean six or seven or something different it's more like uh, separating the good ones from the decent ones decent ones want the lukewarm ones and so on so scores are only to kind of uh, summarize what did I really think about an album is that album that good or that good sometimes the difference is very very small and of course we are all human beings um, our opinions might change over the years like when I was doing my dog throw and worst to best some I don't think four years ago I actually found out that some of the albums which I liked quite a bit um, back in the days are something that I didn't feel that love anymore and that's human we sometimes start to like albums more than what we used to that's symbolic is a good example of that I always thought that it was a great album but I guess for many years it was more in the 8.5 9 out of 10 kind of a territory later years it became one of those 10 out of 10 albums and mind you there are not too many maybe 10 or so so in my opinion these review scores are not set in stone sometimes an 8 becomes a 7 like with that Emperor's Anthems case sometimes 8 becomes a 9 and we're kind of bound to go with the chains so in that hindsight it's kind of a hard to say that these scores are the final ones I might feel an, about an album like it's an 8 now but maybe after five years it's gonna be 9 or maybe it's a 7 the chains are not that drastic it's not like a 9 or it becomes a 6 or vice versa but a 9 could become 8 8 could become 9 that's pretty much the scale for me anyway but each and every different person is individual so however you rate it and where you rate it it's up to you I use personally uh, rate, rate your music or R V R Y M for ratings because it's fun but I also am kind of annoyed that the scaling uh, the scale and star system goes from 1 to 5 so for example for me there's a kind of a gap between 6.5 and 7 however here I translate it like they both are 3.5 out of 5 well let's talk about numbers and scores but I guess I just want you to understand how the works of a review person at least in this case works and I know there are lots of medium who just go with the three out of five kind of stars whatever is out there if they don't really like it if they don't hate it it's three out of five and they might even said this is pretty good of an album three out of five which makes a very little sense to me because if I think something is quite good and blah 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 it's definitely better than three out of five but like I said we're all individuals and each reviewer goes differently each media might have different you know rules how those scores are given and all that stuff but enough of this nonsense right now I hope this makes uh, you understand how do I rate how do I give those scores and uh, if you don't well you're beyond help <laughs> in terms of Rauda anyway and I will probably use this video later on whenever people ask me about how is this score happening I will give a link to this video because I am kind of a tired to explain this over and over again I think this is the one video that you need to hear from me regarding scores and that's it should I change my opinion in the coming years then I will make a new video and explain I was all wrong back in the year 2023 anyway I hope this video made some sense to you and if not well fuck it let's grab a beer see ya and bye bye